Mushroom Valley Flying Battery? Sandopolis? These levels aren't in this game, so what's going on here? So a few months later, we're introduced to the next game in the series, Sonic and Knuckles. So Sonic 3 was... incomplete. And this game came out just a few months later. That's... concerning. Unless... Hmm... So let's look into the game first. This game plays exactly like Sonic 3, but instead of Tails, we can now play as Knuckles. Knuckles can glide and climb walls to reach other areas, but he also can't jump as high as Sonic and Tails. His roots also have more enemies and obstacles, so it's safe to say he's the hard mode of the game. Special stages return in this game accessed in the same way as Sonic 3, finding the giant ring. The special stages here are exactly the same as Sonic 3. Sure, they have different layouts, but it's still the same style of special stage. Bonus stages return as well, but this time there are two of them. They're accessed in the same way that they are in Sonic 3, but the ring requirement is different. If you cross a checkpoint with between 20 and 34 rings, you'll get Slot Machine. Slot Machine is a combination of Sonic 1's special zones and the slot machines from Sonic 2's Casino Night. However, unlike in Sonic 1, touching a wall for too long will eventually turn it into a goal sphere, thus kicking you out. If you cross a checkpoint with 35 or more rings, you'll get Glow Ball. You just traverse these Glow Ball thingies to the top of the level, trying to avoid the laser. But we're not done with the similarities to Sonic 3 just yet. The Act 2 boss music is exactly the same as in Sonic 3. All of the common sprites, like Sonic, the rings, monitors, etc. are the same. The final boss music is the same, and there are level transitions and unique Act 2 songs as well. So, what's with all the similarities to Sonic 3? Well, if you're familiar with this game, you already know. But, for those of you who don't know... You see, Sonic & Knuckles isn't a sequel to Sonic 3. It's the second half of Sonic 3. Yes, that's right. Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles are two halves of one game. Why? Well, back in 1993, Sonic Team began working on the sequel to Sonic 2. They wanted it to be bigger and better. More levels, longer levels, the largest game they could make. However... A problem arose. Now, I have heard two different stories on this, and both seem very likely. It could be one or the other, it could be both, it could be neither. I don't know for sure, but these are the two stories I have heard. The first one is pretty simple. The game was just too big to fit on a single cartridge. Remember, this was back in the early 90s when game cartridges could only hold up to 4 megabytes of space. The other one is more complicated, but still very likely. You see, at the time, Sega had a contract deal with McDonald's Corporation for Sonic Happy Meal toys to coincide with Sonic 3's release. And per that contract, they needed to have the game finished and ready to be released by a certain deadline. And that deadline was fast approaching, and they were nowhere near finished. So regardless of whether it was not enough space, or avoiding getting sued by McDonald's, or both, they polished up what they had finished and released it as what we know today as Sonic 3. However, they continued working on the rest of the game as they didn't want their work to go to waste. But they also didn't want fans to have to play the game in two parts, so they went to their hardware department and told them of their plight. And the hardware department whipped up this little gem. This cartridge has a little flap on top of it, and when you open it up, there's another cartridge slot. This is a technique known as lock-on technology. You can put another cartridge in here. If you lock on any cartridge that's not Sonic 2 or 3, you get Blue Spheres, a minigame collection styled like the Sonic 3 special stages. And if you lock on Sonic 1, the number of said stages can reach the millions. If you lock on Sonic 2, you get Knuckles in Sonic 2. There's not much to say about it. It's Sonic 2, but with Knuckles. And then finally, if you lock on Sonic 3, you get Sonic 3 and Knuckles, the complete Sonic 3 package. 
It contains all the levels from Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles, plus you can play as Tails in the Sonic & Knuckles levels and Knuckles in the Sonic 3 levels, allowing you to explore those extra paths that Sonic & Tails couldn't. So, let's talk about the levels on the Sonic & Knuckles side of things. I'm going to refer to them by number in Sonic 3 and & Knuckles and not Sonic & Knuckles alone. After beating Launch Base, the game drops you into the seventh level, Mushroom Hill Zone. Mushroom Hill is pretty easy, especially since it was the first level of Sonic & Knuckles, but for a seventh level, it's not that challenging. In Act 2, however, the seasons start to change due to a weather machine Robotnik created. You start out in summer, most of the act is set in autumn, and then at the end, you're in winter. No spring for some reason. Once you destroy Robotnik's weather machine, you initiate the boss. The eighth level is Flying Battery Zone. Fun fact, this level was originally planned to go in between Carnival Night and Ice Cap, but they pushed it back to later in the game. Anyways, this level is a giant airship, but unlike Wing Fortress, you spend most of your time inside the thing. After you beat the boss, the ship crashes and you fall back down to Angel Island. The ninth level is Sandopolis Zone. It's boring. In Act 1, you're traversing through the desert, and then in Act 2, you're inside a pyramid haunted by ghosts. You have to keep the lights on to keep the ghosts away. The 10th level is Lava Reef Zone, the inside of Angel Island's active volcano. At the start of Act 2, the lava cools and everything is more calm, with crystals lighting up the way. But then in the boss, the Death Egg lights the place up again. The 11th level is Hidden Palace Zone. It's a single act with no enemies. Also, it uses the exact same music as Lava Reef Act 2. This is where you confront Knuckles, and eventually he realizes who the true villain is when Robotnik steals the Master Emerald. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, uh, Robotnik tricked Knuckles into thinking Sonic and Tails are the bad guys how to steal the Master Emerald, and that's why he steals the Chaos Emerald from him at the beginning. Anyways, once Robotnik gets the Emerald, the Death Egg begins to rise again with the three heroes giving chase. The twelfth level is Sky Sanctuary Zone, another single act level. This level is a chase into space for Sonic and Tails to get on the Death Egg before it leaves the planet's atmosphere. However, one of Robotnik's newest creations, Mecha Sonic, tries to stop them using old bosses. Seriously, it uses the Wrecking Ball from Sonic 1's Green Hill and the Mini Eggmobiles from Sonic 2's Metropolis. There are also a bunch of robots called Egg Robos flying around, and you'll want to remember them for later. After giving the coup de grace to Mecha Sonic, the two finally manage to make it aboard the Death Egg. The 13th and seemingly final level of the game is Death Egg Zone. Unlike in Sonic 2, where it was just two rooms with bosses, this time it's a full-on level with two acts and lots of obstacles. After destroying the Death Egg once again, Robotnik uses his latest creation, the Kyodai Eggman Robo, at least that's what the manual calls it, to try and stop Sonic. After destroying it, Robotnik tries to make a getaway with the Master Emerald before being stopped by Sonic. However, that's not the end. Robotnik manages to take the emerald back, and if you have all the emeralds, Sonic gives chase as Super Sonic. The 14th and true final level of the game is the Doomsday Zone. It's one final battle in space with Super Sonic versus Robotnik. Eventually, Sonic manages to get the Master Emerald back, and that's the end of the game. Or not. After the Master Emerald is returned, a lone Egg Robo enacts its own plan, and with Sonic and Tails gone, it's up to Knuckles to stop it. Yeah, the events of Knuckles' playthrough actually happen after the events of Sonic and Tails' playthrough. His playthrough ends at Sky Sanctuary, since the Death Egg is already destroyed, where he butts heads with Mecha Sonic, who survived its encounter with Sonic and Tails. Using the power of the Master Emerald, Mecha Sonic becomes Super Mecha Sonic, but its energy only lasts for a short amount of time before it needs to recharge itself. After defeating it once and for all, the Sky Sanctuary is destroyed, Sonic comes to Knuckles' rescue, and the Master Emerald is returned to its proper place once and for all, and that's the end of the game. This game also has a very special surprise. After collecting all seven Chaos Emeralds and reaching Mushroom Hill, you gain access to the Super Emeralds. Collecting all seven of those gives you something very, very special. Hypersonic, Super Tails, and Hyper Knuckles. Whereas Super Sonic is a beast, Hyper Sonic is a mega beast who has all the powers of Super Sonic plus the ability to breathe underwater and an air dash that destroys every enemy on screen. Hyper Knuckles is pretty much the same as Super Knuckles except he can glide a lot faster and when he lands on a wall after gliding, it creates a shockwave that kills every enemy on screen. And finally, Super Tails does this.
he basically snaps the game in half. He has four Flickies that follow him around, or as some call me Johnny likes to call them, his Flicky Army of Death. Essentially, they will attack anything and can't be hurt. They absolutely decimate boss fights. It's incredible. So, what are my final opinions? Sega achieved what they set out to do with Sonic 3. It truly is bigger and better than its predecessor. This is without a doubt my favorite Genesis Sonic game. Not this. Not this. This. This is the true Sonic 3. Overall, I give this game a 10 out of 10. A game that is perfect in pretty much every way. Before I finish off, I'd like to give a bit of time to Sonic 3 Angel Island Revisited, or AIR for short. It's a fan-made upgrade of Sonic 3 that adds in a lot of the same features as the Christian Whitehead versions of Sonic 1, 2, and CD, because for some reason Sega didn't greenlight a Christian Whitehead version of Sonic 3. Something about copyright issues with the music because of Michael Jackson's involvement? I don't know. If you love Sonic 3, play this game. You do have to own a legitimate Steam copy of the game for it to work, but I think it's worth it. This game is great. And with that, we are done with the first half of the classic side of this dual marathon. And as I mentioned in my announcement video, next time we're going to be starting the first half of the modern slash 3D side of this dual marathon. So I will see you all next time with Sonic Adventure. <laughs>